Hi, I'm Shamal Lane, and this is the second video in a series featuring the November 2012 kits from Studio Calico. So today I'm going to be using the first add-on, which is called Bobby Socks, and then also the main kit. And I have my main kit all lined up along the side of my desk, and then I've just unpacked the add-on. So I'll take you through what's in here. There's um, the Starburst washi tape in red. And then a special set of stamps made just for the add-on has one, two, three, four, five, six separate little small stamps. One red shipping tag. These great red star rhinestone um, adhesive rhinestones from Jenny Bolin. Also some stamp um, postage stamp stickers from Jenny Bolin with all different numbers and some punctuation. The Midway Brads from October Afternoon. Black and white epoxy or enamel type um, letters from Heidi Swap. And then these are the papers. This one is not a traditional paper. At first, when it was in the kit, I thought it was just a silver and white um, chevron. But once I pulled it out, this is actually 12 by 12 washi. So, so you can see... So it's just like washi tape, but it's a giant sheet of it, and it's on a backing. It's by We Are Memory Keepers, and so I'm thinking um, there's definitely a, a good chance to use maybe some dies and try die cutting and punching and all sorts of different things with the washi, things that you can't just do with a normal strip of the washi tape. And then pattern papers, there's a blue from Basic Gray, October Afternoon Stripe, and pie charts, fancy pants, uh, gray with white dots. Oh, this is another October afternoon, a turquoise one, and one from Pebbles with gray, um, gray background and white speech bubbles. And then all of these, with the exception of that washi, of course, are double sided. So the other sides look like this. So there's a bit more yellow um, and a bit more green on the other side. So looking at them this way, I really liked that combination of gray and turquoise. So I'm going to go with that color scheme and I have two four by six photos for the story that I want to use. One of them is black and white and one of them's in color. And that just happened to be the way that I had printed it. And uh, I printed these a long time ago. They're not particularly recent photos. And I just thought I would put them together because the, they go together with the story that I want to tell. And I liked the idea of bringing the black and black and white photo in with the gray paper. So that's where I'm going to start. I have all my um, little pieces from the main kit just in a bowl so that I can have that all to hand. So there's lots of wood veneer flowers, but there's also some brads and badges and a few little die cuts, plus the green washi and the stamps from the main kit in there too. And then I just have all my papers and stickers flat on the desk. So I'm going to pick a few papers to get started and then I'll take you through this layout from start to finish. Starting with that gray stripe paper from October afternoon in the add-on, plus some inky black Mr. Hueys. And I'm just going to start by adding a few drops of the black ink on that background. I know that I'm planning for my photos to go kind of in this area of the page. Not quite happy with how I've just done that, so that's a little bit better. So if I can. Take this line down to the corner and then um, add a couple up here in this corner. And if I do this at the very beginning, then if I have a case where the ink droplets don't go in quite the place where I was intending them to go, so here where they, I've got a few too many that just kind of um, went together as two separate or two small blobs together. It wasn't really the look I was going for and I like these smaller more perfect circles. So um, by having that on the page first then I can just go ahead and make adjustments by adding my layers on top of that and that'll be okay. Um, so sometimes that's a little bit easier than putting all the paper layers and then putting the ink on. Certainly a lot less intimidating if you're worried about it going a bit wrong. So I'm just going to set that aside to dry for a minute while I um, 
get the photos ready to go. And I'm going to mat these on a paper from the main kit, and it's the back of the yellow starburst paper, and it's a pink paper. And it's actually not quite wide enough because of what I already cut. It's not quite wide enough for me to do just on the polka dot. It has this um, stripe down the side, and so I'm just going to overlap the photos so that that stripe is included instead of taking the branding strip off. That stripe is just the back of the barcode strip. So these two photos I know are a little bit different aside from the fact that one's in color and one's in black and white. Um, but this was at a restaurant at the top of a skyscraper and this was the view taken while we were sat there. So um, I promise there it's not completely random. There is a little bit of sense to it once I get it all down on the page. But that's the short explanation so that it makes sense as we put the page together. And on most of my pages I use brown ink but because I'm using so much gray in this particular design I'm going to opt for black instead. So just add a bit of black ink around the edges of every layer of paper that I add to the page. So now I can have a look here and see if that's going to cover the spots I didn't like and yes it's going to be a perfect fit so that will be just fine. I'm not attaching that just yet because I want to add a bit more color. I want to bring in the turquoise so I think I will start I want to use both this pale basic gray and then the brighter uh, turquoise from October afternoon and I think because this is pale I was trying to decide in what order that should go and I think the better case would be to have the, the brighter color as the background layer so I'll just cut two more rectangles and what I'll do is cut around this using each layer so that each one is progressively a little bit bigger but I'm not going to attach this and then cut around it because I want to be able to move them around and not have it just be a perfect um, graduated mat. I want there to be a bit of an angle to it. I have quite a bit of pale color here so I want to bring in something a little bit brighter so I'm going to go with the red shipping tag and there's a nice gap made here by the ink blots so just want to have a look at where this would fit because there's no sense in me wasting all of the tag that's underneath there so if I just mark where that will be covered up then I can come in here and save the rest of that red for elsewhere on the layout. And I'll add the tag just in those layers right off the side so it's tucked underneath one photo mat but on top of the others. And I'll move it in enough that you can still see these ink blots here so you get that diagonal line. And I can use the straight lines of the background paper to line that up. I'll worry about the string later. And then to repeat that color, I'll cut a little tab from this and I think I'll round the corners of this little piece and put this at the top. You could also use a, a little tab punch to make a file tab for the top. And then that can go up here. Maybe I'll tuck it behind the pink here as well so that it is behind the same layer, both top and bottom. And I'll just add a little bit of a dimension behind here, just adding a couple small pop dots at the top so that it has a little lift at the top of the page and looks a bit more like actually in a stack of papers. There we go. 
And I know that I want to include some of these stamped designs. I definitely wanted to include the two with text in this particular page. So I'm going to um, stamp those on a, another bit of paper. I'm just looking for what paper would be the best option. And then I'm going to cut around and attach those on top so that there's a little bit of layering on top of the tag. This is a scrap of that same wood grain that I used in the first page for the for the leaves. So this is from the main kit. And I'm just going to stamp these with black ink since that's what I did the ink splatters in. Just stamp each of the text designs that I wanted on this and then I'll cut them out. I think I'll stamp the heart as well. If I decide not to include it then that's not the end of the world. It can go somewhere else perhaps. These definitely stamp very nicely. So Let's give the heart a try as well. Perfect. So now I'm just going to cut around each of these and um, maybe, yeah, I'll cut the, the heart in a circle and these two in little squares. I have the little stamp pieces cut out. I cut this one into a little pennant shape and then one in a square and one in a circle. And I wanted to add a little bit of something horizontal so that I have a little something to build on this tag here. So I'm using that red washi that's in the kit in the add-on to link the photo over to the striped background. And if putting tape and elements is not your style, if it, uh, putting it on top of the photo is not your style, just make adjustment because you can, you can put this underneath just as easily and it's just a case of what you like. So um, I get a lot of comments that, that putting things on top of the photo is not everybody's comfort zone and that's absolutely fine. Just take that and, and move it over slightly and then you don't have any trouble. So I want to repeat that same thing at the top but just with a tiny little bit. So I'll just use that here to link the label to the photo here. And then I thought I'd pull in this little badge from the main kit and wanted to use some of the postage stamp stickers from the add-on. And this is a honeymoon layout so I'm going to use the number two and the and sign but in separate places. So just like the first page had three areas of embellishment and I was trying to repeat things in those three different spots on the page. This time I just have two areas of embellishment at least at this point and I want to have things that can repeat so I'm going to use the and sticker up here and I've just the bottom's flat but with a pop dot at the top so I'm continuing to add that dimension at the top and then I want to add these pieces and with um, pennants you want the dimension at the bottom so just put one little one at the bottom and then just kind of bend it so that it has that little bit of movement. And the badge. I wasn't sure if that would go with flat adhesive. No, it needs um, foam adhesive because the edge is a little higher than the back. Oh, so in this case, it needs to be. Actually, I use a larger one instead of my teeny tiny ones here. But yeah, it needs to go on the page with foam tape or pop dot or something like that that will raise the back so that it's actually adhering to the page. There we go. Easy enough, except I end up with these little papers everywhere. So all of these items just kind of overlapping in a little group. I've got that angled the opposite way that I wanted. There we go. And so by the time I get all those pieces there, you don't see a lot of the red tag, but you don't need to. I just want there to be that, that little spark of red that then brings your eye to the cluster of embellishments. So 
that will work. Now I want to work on this one and I know I want to repeat the postage stamp and the stamped wood grain piece. So I have both of those. And I can group these together using that washi tape as the grounding, the bottom of the group. And I'm trying to connect so this piece in the middle touches this sticker, covers this gap, touches the photo so I don't have a gap in between. And that pulls everything together. Now I don't have another badge. I have the, the other badge from the main kit. But just because they're both badges doesn't really mean, and in fact the color is not a bad match here, but it's not the right theme for what I want to use here. So I won't put a badge in this one. And I know I do still have um, this little heart. And I'm thinking the heart would work well in this line of ink dots. So I may just, in fact, I'll go ahead and commit to that. I will, um, just trying to decide if I should add a little bit of red as well. So I think I'll add a little bit of washi tape going off the bottom of the page, just off the side in the bottom corner. And then the little heart circle on top of that. And when I get to the absolute end of the layout, then I might add a finishing touch here. Embellishment like this with just a little bit of stitching or a gem or something can um, work really well, even though it's just two or three little pieces to the page. Um, I haven't added a title or my writing yet, so I'm going to bring in um, my lettering options. I have red from the main kit or the black and white. Don't particularly want to use the white on top of the cream-based um, pattern paper. So in this case, I'm looking at either black letters or red letters and possibly mixing the two together. So I'll figure out the best place for the title. I'm thinking this space here and then add my writing and come back for any finishing touches. I'm not quite sure how easy it will be to see that there's journaling here because I've written it on the very small lines of the paper, but in person it is possible to read. You do have to look close, but I'm okay with the asking somebody to look closely if they really want to know the details. And then to finish off, I'm going to use some of the brads from that big set that's in the add-on. So I wanted to bring a little more color down to this bottom corner, so I have um, a pink and red design to go down here and I thought that did a, uh, that would help pull that pink paper in with the red embellishment and a turquoise one here and then some smaller brads because this grouping is quite full but I'm going to add a, um, a turquoise or aqua really and red brad up here and in with the dots to form that diagonal line. So just grab my paper piercer and put those into place and then that one will be all finished. Brads are in place and then I did grab just a few of the little rhinestone star stickers and sprinkle them in as well just to give it a little bit um, of a different color. I like the bit of sparkle and to emphasize that diagonal line once again. Um, only other thing I didn't mention was when I added the title in those black and white letter stickers, do be careful of what you want to spell because there's only um, a few of certain uh, letters. So I couldn't actually spell this all out in black because there's only one N in each color. So to to use um, this word I had to use the black and the white. So I just tried to keep the white closer into and um, in toward the whiter the white paper because this one's white based but this one is a cream based paper. Um, it's not my favorite of all time, but it certainly um, works and it's not the end of the world. Um, I do really like the black. I just wish there had been enough letters and maybe I should have uh, changed the wording of my title, but I didn't want to uh, change my mind once something seemed to work in my head. So sometimes we, we make a few sacrifices here and there and we have to choose if we want the title, we want the coloring. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's fine by me. So, okay. Thank you so very much for watching this second video in the series and I hope you will come by and watch the rest throughout the week. Thanks so much.